something to eat, get you something to drink, sit back, relax, you gonna have a good time. Alright, man. We gonna have a good time. Morning, Christ Center. Thank you for logging on this morning. So excited to see you as always. I am meeting you at the grill today and the Lord has downloaded an amazing message to me through me to get to you. And so I'm excited about that. So remember that Christ Center Church empowers people to replace a self-centered life with the Christ centered life. And we are going to go into worship and experience the presence of the Lord. And then you'll meet me back here at the grill and we'll see what the Lord is cooking. Set a fire today, God. Yes, Lord God. Ignite us from we within so that we can burn for you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We honor you, Lord. We magnify you, God. We glorify you. We love you, Lord. We bless your name, Lord. We glorify your name. Yes, God. Can you sing it with us? No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. Yes. There's no place I would rather be. 
There's no place I would rather be than here in your love. Here in your love. Can you say that again? There's no place. There's no place I would rather be. There's no place I would rather be. God, we worship you. There's no place I would rather be. Love. Tell them again, no place I would love. rather be. There's no, no place I would rather be. We worship you. No place I would rather be. We adore you. No place I would rather be. Than here. Hearing your love. Hearing your love. There's no place I would rather be. How we bless you. No place I would rather be. God, we glorify you. No place I would rather be. You're hearing your love, hearing your love, hearing your love. So set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. So set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. So set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't we control. Want more of you. I 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 want more of you. Tell them to set a fire. Set a fire soul. down in my soul that I can't contain, and I can't that control. I can't
no place we'd rather be. No place we'd rather be. No place we'd rather be than here in your love, here in your love. No place we'd rather be. No place we'd rather be. No place we'd rather be than here in your love. Here in your love. We bless your name, Jesus. We honor you. That should be our prayer, that we want the Lord to set a fire in us, that we'll have more of him. Listen, with the things that are going on in our state, our city, states, country, world, we need to ask God to keep that flame burning because the enemy wants to snuff it out. And the way we do that is through worship, where we cry out to God and ask him to set a fire in our soul that we will have more of him. Thank you, Worship and Arts, for leading us into the presence of God this morning. Hey, you know what, I, let's, let's do worship, let's do uh, giving right here. I know we normally do it at, at the other, at the end of uh, our time together, but let's, let's prepare offering at this moment. Can we do that? I think this is a great moment to, uh, to go to offering and offer the Lord our substance today. So can we do that? So um, the, the text teaches us in Proverbs that we should honor the Lord with the first fruit of our substance, all right, so that our barns would overflow and that our vats will overflow with new wine. And so it, it is important that we remember that. So I have a, I have a basil plant and because I have been doing, uh, having an herb garden for a while, it is one thing uh, that I find very interested, uh, interesting with basil. Um, they tell you that it grows a lot, so you, you, there's plentiful, and I have a small one in the house now that's very, very plentiful. And then when it stops yielding, it blooms a flower. But experts say if you break, and I've experienced this, if you break the top off of it, that flower, break it off, the plant will keep yielding for you. And it is just like our giving, that we have to break the top off so that it could keep yielding. And so we give God the first fruits, we break it off, give it to you. And as a result, there is still a fruitful yield in our lives. So our information uh, in giving is on the screen right now. And you can give in three ways. You can go to bechristcenter.tv and there's an online, click online right there, or give online, you can click there. We also have text to give and you can give text to give and you can always also set up reoccurring giving. Uh, through text to give and that way you can uh, make sure that you're faithful there. So I want to encourage you to give and I want to thank you for your faithful giving and as always I thank you for those who give in pastoral support. Thank you. It's such a blessing to me. Thank you all of you that uh, give to the house of God and also give in that way to me. I appreciate you and am grateful. Um, the Lord is faithful so let's take a moment and let's worship the Lord in giving. Can we do that? Good. We want to take a moment and celebrate all the fathers and say happy Father's Day to all the fathers there. Um, fathers matter. It is, you know, it is the father that gives the seed that determines the sex of the child. And so fathers give identity. And so we want to celebrate all the fathers. We want to celebrate all the uncles who step up and be uh, father-like figures, all the big brothers, all of the godfathers, the grandfathers. We want to celebrate you today and say happy Father's Day. We got a video and some special music that we'd like for you to see. And then I'll come back and we will see what the Lord is saying at the grill. When you're a dad, you have to play a lot of roles. Hey, 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 don't eat that! Don't tap on the brain! Don't get loaded. All right. Oh, you're good. Take, take a left, turn left, turn left, turn left. When a man loves a woman, he... Honey! All righty, sweetie. This time I want you to concentrate and focus on the ball. You got this. Sweetie, your date's here. 
Two weeks, no TV, no phone. So this is my door in my house. I told you not to slam it. You get the door back when I say you get the door back. I told you before, don't you slam the door in my house. I told you. Ah! Hey, knock it off. Don't let me turn this car around. I'll do it. What are you wearing? No, I, you're not going anywhere looking like that. Go on back upstairs and put some clothes on. Okay. Oh! Got it. Ooh, sweetie, open the door. Get the door. Get the door. Get the door. Get the door. Open the door. Open the door, sweetie. Open. Bye. And Jesus steps in and stops everybody before they start throwing the rocks. And he says, let he who's without sin throw the first stone. You do all of this knowing that one day you will get fired because we all get fired. But by the grace of God, you might get hired back to be a consultant. Hey, sweetie. What's up? Father, we worship you this morning and we sing of your goodness. I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard tender whispers of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you are pleased and that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. Who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you.
loved by you. How sweet it is you I am. to be loved by you. you. I am. You're a good, good father. How sweet it is to be loved by you. Find myself in you. I'm loved by you. I'm loved by you. Thank you, Jesus. So this morning, I'm excited about the message that the Lord has given. And so we're going to be cooking and delivering a meal all at the same time. So let's just see how this works. If you have your devices this morning, I want you to open your Bibles to the book of Daniel, the third chapter. And I want to read from verses 24 and 25. And here's how, here's how it reads. Suddenly, King Nebuchadnezzar jumped up in alarm and said, didn't we throw three men bound hand and foot into the fire? That's right, O king, they said. But look, he said, I see four men walking around freely in the fire, completely unharmed. And the fourth man looks like a son of the gods. So far, our scripture reading this morning, I want to talk to you from this thought. Grill marks. Let's pray together. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this moment, this time of preaching and delivering your message. I pray, Lord, that you would make clear to us your heart in this message. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would give me what I need to uh, clearly articulate the pictures that you have given into my head. And so I pray today that the hearts of my brothers and sisters are open and ready to hear from you. Now I pray today that you would think through my mind, speak through my mouth, give me clarity of thought and agility of wit. Allow me to talk in the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. As we go forward in our uh, series called Summer Madness, we step into today's talk called Grill Marks. Now this is a famous text. Uh, it's the Hebrew boys. And so uh, I'll, I'll bring you up to speed. Um, so the king builds a, 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 a god of gold and he wants everybody to bow down. And he sends out the email to everybody, the text message to everybody. And he says, um, when you hear this music play, everybody bows down. All right, I'll give you the abridged version. The boys say, hey, that's not what we are gonna do. They don't bother anybody. But uh, there were some haters around who didn't like them. And this is, uh, of course, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Um, actually, their real names was uh, Mishael, Hananiah, and Azariah. And so uh, they didn't bow down and some haters went back and told the king. And so the king blacks out and uh, the king says, you know what? Here's what we're going to do. You're going to bow down or if not, I'm going to put you in the fire. And so the fire, he says, uh, then the boy said, no, 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 uh, king, here's the here's the deal. We are not going to bow down. And even if you throw us in the fire, our God will deliver us. And even if he doesn't. He is able. So the king says, we're going to turn it up seven times hotter than we normally have it. And they are, we're going to put them in. This is where we pick up today. Um, so in this text, there are a few up front, front and center uh, characters. Okay. We have the Hebrew boys, of course. We have King Nebuchadnezzar. But then we also have uh, Jesus, who was in the fire with the boys. Those three characters, front and center. 
and um, we hear a lot of messages about that. And this is a text that has been preached a million times. I mean, I've preached it a million and one. <laughs> so my prayer today is that you won't tune me out, but that you'll open your heart and hear what I got to say here. But then there's a, there is a fourth character that I'd like to bring forward today that I don't know that we preach a lot about in this text. The fourth character is fire. Fire is in this text. And so what's really interesting to me is that the Bible says that the king picked some strong men out of the army and he says to them, I want you to bound these guys, bind these guys, hand and feet, throw them in the fire. So the strong men come forward, they bind them, hand and feet, take them to the fire. The Bible says that the fire was so hot that the men that opened the door to throw them in got killed. But what's amazing is even outside of the fire, the Hebrew boys did not die. So this fire plays a major part in today's talk. So let's talk about it. This fire is a key component. And really, as we talk about the fire, I'm really going to be interchanging the word, the process uh, along with this word fire. So when we pick up in the text, the king is amazed at the fact that he said, wait a minute. I put in three guys bound hand and foot. Go back and read the text. He says, but now I see four walking around. So there's a lot happening that the fire is responsible for. Okay, there's a lot happening here. First of all, if you're taking notes, I don't have many notes for you today. I really just got two. Note number one, the fire consumes things. When the boys went in, they were bound hand and foot, but the fire burned the ropes that bound them. Here's what's amazing to me. God used the fire to deliver them. Only a God can take you through the fire and burn off what shouldn't be and preserve what remains. That's the level of trust that we understand that the boys had before they went in, okay? So here's what I want you to see. The fire consumes. So when we started this morning, I put in the charcoal, but then you saw that the charcoal started turning white because the fire was consuming it. And really at the place where the charcoal, this is the lump hardwood charcoal, at the place where it's all white is the place where it does its best work because the fire is consuming. And that's the thing about fire. The fire has delivering properties. That's what we see in the text that the fire delivers these boys and he delivers, the fire delivers them while they're yet in it, okay? It has purifying properties. This is how our, our, uh, all of the, the jewelry that we like to wear, this is how it's made, the fine uh, stones or the fine metals like gold and silver. Let me show you what the text says here in Malachi chapter three, verse two and three, I'm reading from NIV here. It says, but who can endure the day of his coming? Who can stand when he appears? Listen, he is like, or he will be like a refiner's fire and a launderer's soap. He will sit as a refiner of, and a purifier of silver, and he will purify the Levites and refine them like gold and silver. So here's what the refiner would do. The refiner would put this metal, silver or gold, put it over in a cauldron. And what they would do is turn the fire up and as the fire melts down this silver or gold, the impurities that's in it come forward or come up. And then the, the refiner takes a ladle and scrapes off all the impurities. But what he normally does is he keeps turning it up more 
and more and more because the more he turns it up, the more the impurities come out. And the way the refiner knows that the silver is pure or the gold is pure is that he will look over into it. And if he sees his reflection without the blemishes that he knows not on his face, then he says it's ready. What God does is he takes fire and he lets fire consume the stuff in us that's not like him. And then he looks over into the cauldron of our lives to see if we reflect him without spot or blemish. Because fire consumes. It delivers. And in the case of the boys, it delivers. Hey, let's look at this meat right quick. Come here. I just want to do a quick three-quarter turn on it. So now we see point number one, fire consumes. So here's the other thing that fire does. You ready? Fire makes things consumable. Fire consumes, but it also makes things consumable. Let's look at the steak again. So when we look at this steak, there are some people who eat just like raw steak. That would be steak tartare. I know people who eat like that, and I'm just not even going to call any names. <laughs> but for those of us that don't eat raw meat, what this fire does, the fire, although it consumed the lump wood charcoal, it makes consumable this meat. And so when this meat is consumable, it meets needs in us. It nourishes us because it's protein. It gives us the energy that we need to move forward. So point number one, the fire consumes. Point number two, the fire makes things consumable. And God uses the fire of our lives to make us consumable to the nations. He wants to use you in your neighborhood. That's why you've been going through some things. That's why you've gone through all the stuff that you've been through years and years ago. Because God is making us consumable. And God allows the fire in our lives to make us consumable to those who need what we have to offer. And God uses us. The word teaches us that, uh, that he, we become meat for the master's use. Y'all with me? Let's turn this steak over. Now let's talk a little bit about grill marks. <laughs> so grill marks is what's left on the steak after the steak has had contact with the fire. <laughs> And the, and the grill marks was left on me and you after we've gone through the fire. See, the grill marks are the residue, and it's the proof that we've been through something. Y'all don't want to hear what I'm saying. Grill marks, the proof that we've been through something, listen, and that we survived it. Because remember... There's some stuff that I left in the fire because the fire consumes. But when I come out with grill marks, the grill marks say I am now consumable. And the fire is that process. And the grill marks is the testimony that I've been through some things. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So others can see. That's why we got grill marks. So others can see. Hey, let's look at 1 Peter 5 and 10. I'm going to show you something. Well, I'm going to close this grill real quick. You there? First Peter 5.10. I love this. It says, but may the God of all grace, who calls us into his uh, eternal glory by Christ Jesus. Watch this. After you have suffered a while, this God is going to perfect you, establish you, strengthen you and settle you. See, that's the grill marks. He says, after you've gone through the process, after you've gone through the fire, what comes after that is the grill marks that says you are strengthened, you have been established, you've been settled. That's how you can tell people who've gone through some stuff and people who ain't gone through nothing. People who've gone through stuff, when things arise in their lives, they're settled. 
because I've been through some stuff and God kept me and I can't, I'm not worried about what's coming because I've been through processes before and what needed to be burned off was, it was consumed, but God, after every process, makes me more consumable because there are, there are grill marks left on my life that others can see, which makes them want to have an account, encounter. Come on, let's, look, let's, let's go back over here for a second. These grill marks make me want to eat this steak because there's something about grill marks that, you know what, you could have a steak. You could have a steak that's nicely cooked, seared on a flat top. It just don't have that appeal. It is the cosmetics of this grill mark that makes me want it because I love what the grill grate does to it. And so it makes it's like the steak says, hey, come here, have an encounter with me to the same degree. The things that that God has brought us through and the grill marks, old saints will call it the anointing. That is uh, the residue of what I've gone through that has been left on my life makes people want to have an encounter with us. And then we know that that, enc that encounter is really not us. It is the encounter that they need to have with God. So God uses our grill marks to come on, y'all, y'all, y'all hear what I'm saying? So let me say this to you. Don't run from the fire. Don't run from the process. Can, can I, can I look at James chapter one, James chapter one, verse two and four. It's a message Bible it says this, consider it a sheer gift friends. When tests and challenges come at you from all sides. Okay. You know that under pressure, your faith life is forced into the open and shows its true colors. So don't try to get out of anything prematurely. Let it do its work so you become mature and well-developed, not deficient in any way. You can't run from the fire because the fire has a way of making us ready for the next journey. Quit asking God to take you higher if you're not ready to go through the fire. And I didn't mean for that to rhyme, it just came out that way. Don't, don't ask God for promotion if you're not ready to deal with what you gotta deal with so you can have uh, grill marks. Grill marks, always a sign of promotion. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Can I tell you something else? Let me tell you this. Fire is hardly ever by invitation but it's always by necessitation. You hardly ever ask for fire to come into your life, but it's always necessary when it comes. Look at this, Genesis chapter 32. I wanna show you something here. This is, this is really dope, I think. Genesis 32 at verse 24, the text says this, then Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Stop. Whenever we hear about Jacob wrestling with an angel or with God, this is what we hear, that Jacob wrestled with an angel. But that is incorrect because the text says, then Jacob was left alone and a man, capital M, God, wrestled with him. Stop. Um, uh, Jacob wrestling with the man is the thought that he encounters something. He goes after it. But the text says, no, no, no. It's not Jacob that goes after it. It was the man that came after it because Jacob didn't have anything that he wanted from God. But God has some stuff that he wanted from Jacob. And so all the time, the fire this wrestling, this process is not something that we invite, but it is something that is needful. It's not by invitation, but it always is by necessitation. And so God said, I'm getting ready to fight you because there's some stuff in you that I need to get out of you. And the text says they wrestle all night. Can we read the rest of it? Look, it says, now when uh, he saw, he, the man, he, God, saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the socket of his hip. And the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go. This is the man. This is God saying, let me go, Jacob. 
because the day breaks. But Jacob says, I will not let you go until you bless me. Uh oh. You know what the blessing is in this text? It's grill marks. Watch it. Watch what I show you. He says, uh, I won't let you go until you bless me. So he, God says to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. See, in the process, you become more self-aware. Listen, the text does not say where this man came from. He just appeared. And so what we find now is this is like one of those Adam moments in the garden. Adam, where are you? God knows. So God knew who he was, but there comes a time in the fire. There comes a time in the process that you got to be more self-aware. So God is really saying, who are you? Who, who, who are you, Jacob? And listen, the moment comes, oh, when it's just you and God. When I started reading, it opens up and it says, and Jacob was left alone because the process works best when you're left alone. Oh God, I feel like, boy, I feel like preaching. Let me check this steak right quick. Look at that. Would you look at that? I'll give it a few more minutes. The process works best when you're left alone. So here's, here's, what, here's what the text says. The text says, uh, God asked him, what's your name? He says, my name is Jacob because God sometimes wants you to own who you are before you are changed and get your grill marks. <sighs> you gotta be willing to own, I ain't the best man. I ain't the best woman. I haven't done all things right. Come on, I've said and dropped the ball on some issues. You gotta own it when it's just you and him. That's what the process does. The process makes you self-aware and the process brings you to this place where you say, yes, God. Cause Jacob, Jacob means trickster. It means supplanter. He was a smooth operator. You understand what I'm saying? Jacob was the used car salesman kind of guy. But God says, who are you? He says, my name is Jacob. And then we see another grill mark. First grill mark, he got touched in the hip. Second grill mark, his name was changed. Watch what he says. What is your name? He said, Jacob. And he says, your name shall no longer be Jacob, but Israel. For you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. And then Jacob asked him, well, tell me what's your name? He says, why are you asking me about my name? And he blessed, he blessed Jacob right there. So Jacob called the name, the name of the place Peniel. For I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. Watch this. Just as he crossed over, Penuel, the sun rose on him and he limped on his hip. Listen, he had two grill marks in that experience. One, he had a limp because it said that I have been through something and I walk the way I walk because of the things that I've been through. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. If, if this makes sense, come on, hit these likes. Because what he's, re what he's really saying is, God says, I want people to know that you've been with me. So when they ask you, why are you limping? What happened? So he can say then, hey, I had a wrestling with God. God came and he wrestled me and I hung in there until something changed in me. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Because the process will change you. It'll change how you walk. It'll change what people call you. And when those changes come, those are your grill marks. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now here's the thing, grill marks are different. Not everybody has the same grill mark. You hear what I'm saying? Like my grill mark could be, I could be marked by the fact that I buried a child. Some people can be marked because they overcame cancer. Other people can be mar uh, marked because they lived through domestic violence and survived rape. Or they rising up out of the ashes of divorce and they lived through bankruptcy. I mean, there's a, I mean, there's a whole lot of things. But here's the thing. Although we got different grill marks, we don't have the same, but we got the same outcome. And the outcome is I have been through something. What needed to be consumed was... And then that process made me consumable. What are your grill marks? 
Your grill marks speak victory. Grill marks speak. That's what they speak, victory. Watch this, Peter. First Peter chapter 1, verse 6 and 7 says this. I know how great this makes you feel. This is Peter uh, talking to the people that he's pastoring there. He says, even though you have, uh, you have to put up with every kind of aggravation in the meantime, he says, pure gold put in the fire comes out of it proved. Genuine faith put through this suffering comes out proved genuine. Then Jesus wraps it all up. It's your faith, not your goal, that God will have on display as evidence of his victory. It is the, what we go through. God says, they have prevailed. You know, you know uh, 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 a revelation says that they overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. That says, I've been through some stuff. Your testimony, your grill marks. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So here's what happens now. The Hebrew boys go in the fire. The king looks in. He sees them walking around. He sees Jesus in there with them. And he tells them, shut the fire down. Bring these boys out of here. And he says, number one, everybody is going to worship their God. Because they have to have the real God in order to, to go through the fire and come out. Who is your God? Nobody will ever know who your God is, much less worship him if you don't go through, if you don't get the grill marks. And you've been through some stuff that has made you feel like you are less than. Let me tell you something. Because you survived, you are more than. That's what the text says. You're more than a conqueror. Because you survived, you ought to wear those grill marks like a badge of honor. The text says when they come out, the email goes out. Worship their God and we're going to promote them. That was their grill marks. Their grill mark says, we went through the fire, and as a result of going through the fire, this whole region worships our God, and we got a promotion. I don't even have time to tell you that grill marks gets God's glory and gets you promoted. That's why you can't go, you, you can't run from it. You got to stay with it. Let's, let's look at this thing. How you go through what you go through matters. You see how that knife, look at this, Lord have mercy Jesus. Look at that. I want to encourage you. If God is taking you through the fire, he's going to take you through. And just like the Hebrew boys, when you go back and read it, the king says they were not burned. Their hair was not singed, and they don't even smell like smoke. And if you stay with it, you're going to have grill marks on you that's going to cause people to worship the true and living God. And you are going to be promoted. Let's pray together. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that you would allow us to receive your word. I pray today, Lord Jesus, that as we walk through the fire with you, whatever the situation, even, even the fire of the climate of, of this, this country, the climate of the world today, we are walking through it with you. And we thank you now that when we come out, we'll come out with the testimony that we've been through and we've been, uh, and we survived and you will get the glory. We thank you now for being with us before we got there, while we're in it, and after we came out, you've been right there. And we thank you now in Jesus' name, amen. Hey, listen, I wanna give you an opportunity this morning to connect with the Lord Jesus Christ. Think about this. If Jesus had not stepped into the fire with them boys, I don't know that we would have had the same outcome. But because he stepped in, their situation changed. They came out proven 
They came out tried. They came out tested. They came out with grill marks because he stepped in. I want to give you the opportunity to invite Jesus into your life. Maybe you're in the fire right now. And maybe if it seems like you're being consumed opposed to being made consumable. But the difference is the fact that when Jesus steps in, he manages the fire just enough to burn off of us what needs to burn off and to make us into what we need to be made into. Y'all hear what I'm saying? And I want to give you an opportunity this morning. On the screen is a number that I'd love for you to text the word new life, one word, new life, so that you can give your life to Jesus. I got somebody waiting to respond to you right now this morning, real time. They're waiting for you. And I'd love for you to make that connection today and give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're in the fire already, I guarantee you, when you make this decision, he's going to step in there with you. And he's going to manage everything that seems to be overwhelming you and consuming you. Also, for those of you that would like to join Christ Center Church and be a part of our online campus, or maybe you're here locally and you want to be a part of our physical campus when we uh, uh, open back up, we want to give you that opportunity. So you can type connect to that number. I got somebody there waiting on you so we can get you plugged in and ready to run for Jesus. I appreciate you. I love you. Give your life to Jesus right now. Hey, good morning, everybody. I, um, we recorded that sermon earlier this week and I pray that uh, it blessed you. And if it did bless you, would you, uh, Hit those likes so I can see those likes and those hearts or whatever works for you there. Um, I want to take a moment to thank our production team who uh, helped make that happen. Vince Green is a one-man show, but um, he also had this week Mario Reynolds and Sean came and helped. They also helped us eat the steak that we had to, you know, cook several steaks to make, make this work. Um, I want to also thank our band. You see, our, our video today was just amazing. Um, our band and our worship and arts department, uh, Pastor Rodney and Pastor Arkesha Edge for uh, leading our team, our worship and arts team to make our worship happen. And, you know, it's taken a lot of work to, to keep it going and we're going here and there recording and all the, the post-production work. And so I want to thank them. I want to thank our uh, our bass guitar player, Jeremy Thompson, who is my nephew. I want to thank our drummer, who is uh, Jay Fly, who is uh, world renowned, but as as humble. I just appreciate our band for, um, you know, being the guys that they are, but also submitted in the house. They are members of our church. And uh, of course, Jeremy is a member of his mom and dad's church, but he's a, a, a family member. So I want to thank everybody that makes this happen. We had a, a guest guitarist today. His name is Ethan Ridings, and Ridings. And so I told Edge to let him know that he is now a member of our church and our band because he was just fit right in nicely. Also, of course, my, my best friend and brother, Chris Lewis, who uh, actually edited that video that you saw today and then uh, got the unction of the Holy Ghost to sing on it. So it's always fun to just work. Uh, with him and just work with our band. I mean, they're just they're excellent. So I want to thank everybody that makes uh, what we do happen behind the scenes. Our guide and flow team that makes everything uh, still flow, even though we're out of church and work. And thank all of you, those who are on um, on our platform, our greeters on our platform. Thank all of you. And for our members of Christ Center Church, we wouldn't have this if it wasn't for you. So I just want to say thank you all for logging in in the mornings and supporting uh, the move of the church and supporting me as your pastor. I want to say thank you. Happy Father's Day, everybody. So I wanted to jump on live today and speak this blessing over you. Are you ready? I release you today from this platform so that you will go seek and save that which is lost. I declare in Jesus name that everything your hands touch will prosper and every place the soles of your feet shall tread upon you shall possess. I declare in Jesus' name that you're above only and not beneath. You're the head and not the tail. I declare in Jesus' name that um, money waits for you. You are not the problem, but you're the solution to the problem. I declare that on your job, favor waits for you. You are not the problem, but you are the solution to the problem. 
Um, I just said that, didn't I? But let me say that the money part, when the money comes to you, that you have the wisdom to manage the money that comes your way. I declare that your home is established in peace. I declare that your marriage is whole, healthy, and satisfied in the Lord Jesus Christ, and that your single life is whole, healthy, and satisfied in the Lord Jesus Christ, and the blessings of the Lord be upon you. Wholeness, benefit, prosperity, and favor may be your portion both now and forever. Go in peace, and the God of peace goes with you. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks again.